Hello everybody and welcome back to The Hobby Musician. I am so excited about today's episode because today is the first time that our channel is going on location. But before we pack up and hit the road, I want to set the stage for what we're trying to accomplish today. Longtime viewers of the channel might remember that in our last season, we did a three-part mini-series where I talked about the process of researching, purchasing, and ultimately setting up an instrument that we find online. And I happen to have that exact one here. We were buying a multi-scale bass guitar. So last season we talked about all the features, but one of the things that's happened is in the months and months and months after those episodes, I've had the chance to play this and I've had a lot more experience and there is one thing about this instrument that has started to frustrate me and it has everything to do with these pickups. Now you'll notice on this bass guitar, the pickups are angled and they kind of match the whole angling of the frets uh, vibe that we've got going on here, which is okay. But if you happen to be a bass player, or, or even if you're not, one of the things that's very common is each bass player has their own personal preference in how they rest their plucking hand on the bass guitar. Some players will choose a string and they'll put their thumb on the string and that helps provide an anchor point for reaching the other strings. Other bass players, myself included, use the pickups themselves as a resting point. Now, on a regular bass guitar, the pickups are perfectly vertical. So when you rest your thumb on one of those pickups, you have this flat ledge uh, to, to use as an anchor point. But you'll see that these pickups are not flat. And what I started to notice is that a few months into playing, I would either rest my thumb on the angled part and halfway through a song, I'd be going really fast and my thumb would slip and that would make me mess up in the middle of a song. Or sometimes I would then gravitate towards this very top corner and rest my thumb there. And then if I'm playing song after song or just a long practice session, resting on a corner would start to dig into the flesh of my thumb and it was just uncomfortable. Now I started thinking about is there a solution to this? And I realized that, you know, physically, all I would need, all I'm really missing is a flat surface. So I looked at this space and I realized that if there was some kind of triangular modification that we might be able to stick onto this base, I could solve the problem. All I need is a wedge shape, like a little bit of a triangle, that I could stick to either the top of this pickup or the body of the guitar itself. And having that triangle wedge would then mean I could come back and rest my thumb on a flat surface. So I started to think, how can I accomplish this? And if you're, if you're a regular viewer, You'll notice that I said before, I, I am not a master luthier. I don't have a woodworking shop where I could go chisel out a piece out of you know fine mahogany. But I started to think, well, we live in a technologically advanced age and there are other solutions to this. And the first thing I thought of was, what about 3D printing? I've been hearing all kinds of things that basically anything you can dream up, pretty much, you can start to 3D print. Well, as it turns out, I'm also not a 3D printer. I don't have computer modeling skills. I don't own a 3D printer. So I started to reach out to anybody that I could think of that might be able to help us with this project. And as luck would have it, to my very good fortune, Dr. Neil Rothman at Stevenson University agreed to help us. Dr. Rothman is the program director of the biomedical engineering program at Stevenson and in that program there they have design labs with all sorts of instruments and devices to help students build and manufacture items and they actually have a 3D printer and he was so gracious to agree to help us with this project. Now what he's asked for is he just needs to know what kind of dimensions we want. So he's asked if I could maybe mock up a very simple primitive model that we could measure out and send him the dimensions, he will be able to build a model uh, of exactly what we need in order to send it to the printer. So I'm going to head down to the craft store and I'm going to grab something like clay. And if I jam some clay and kind of mold the triangle that I'm looking for, I'm then going to take some measurements and send them off to Dr. Rothman. So I'll be back in just a minute with a, kind of a primitive mock-up of what we're going to build.
All right, everybody, here is what we have so far. Now, I uh, went down and I picked up some clay at the local craft store, and this is what we have. Um, I, it wasn't anything fancy. I just picked out it's basically some kids uh, modeling clay. Um, it just happened to be blue, nothing special about the color. But you'll see here on the guitar, I molded this triangular piece that I kind of see in my head as this is the solution. It now will provide me this flat place to put my thumb. Now you notice I said it's a couple hours later. I was thinking this was going to be a five minute project, but as soon as I smushed all this clay on here, I immediately tried to pull it off to do the measurements and it was still too flimsy. So I've had to let this set and kind of cool back down and, and harden up a little bit. And then when I did, I was able to come back and I carefully then peeled it off. So I just had this piece. Now, what I've done is I've taken this little modeled piece. Now it's, it's not pristine, it's not actually perfect. There's some uh, divots and all kinds of things in it, but using um, the pair of digital calipers that I have, I was able to go and get pretty decent measurements of the, the height that I want and all of the different angles and the lengths of all of the sizes, including this little semicircle kind of nub that's going to fit in that pickup. But between the two of these, I was able to write down kind of a primitive diagram with all the measurements we need so that I could send it on for Dr. Rothman. Now with all of that, the only thing left to do is to pack all this stuff up and meet him in his design lab. So we're going to do that right now and we will be right back uh, in the lab. Welcome back everybody. We are finally here with Dr. Rothman and thank you again for agreeing to help us out with this project. Um, and I see that we're standing in a design lab. So could you just tell us a little bit about what the biomedical you know, engineering majors do in a space like this? Sure. One of the fundamental parts of the biomedical engineering program is design projects. So students do a design project every single year, gives them the opportunity to take what they're learning in the classroom and then apply it to a real biomedical problem. You know, they're working on a project right now that's gonna be about sleep monitoring, right? Designing a wearable device. So we have outfitted the lab with all kinds of tools, hand tools and soldering stations and measurement equipment um, and other kinds of things to help them actually build, uh, to build these projects, right? So they do some programming, they do some electrical work and they do some mechanical stuff, right? Packaging, they need to actually build things. And one of the things that we use for building, obviously, is a, is a 3D printer. So this is our Mark Forged uh, Onyx One 3D printer, uses a really fancy material. It's nylon, but the nylon is reinforced with chopped carbon fiber. So it makes it very, very strong. It prints in very fine layers, four thousandths of an inch. So you get very smooth surface finish, but you get really strong, great looking parts. Right? Here's an example of a small hip uh, replacement. Right, this wow. is actually the size for a dog wow. right, that we printed out, and you can see that it's right. It's lightweight, but it's super strong yeah. um, material. So it, it's great for building sort of any kind of mechanical parts. So you don't have to worry about doing machining or other kinds of things. It's a great way to then take parts that you've designed using computer-aided design and actually realize them very quickly. That is incredible. Well, yeah. So for our particular project. With those dimensions that um, I was able to send you, you you've got them all loaded up, and, and it sounds like we're ready to print. Right, exactly. Right. So we took the the sketch dimensions that you gave us, built a three dimensional model in CAD, and then exported it into the software that the printer uses. Effectively, it takes that geometry and it slices it up into individual layers, and then it's going to print those layers sort of one layer at a time, sort of like drawing each individual layer, and it builds the part up. It's called, it's what's called additive manufacturing. That is incredible. Well, hey, let's uh, get this fired up and let's get to it. Okay, so we've got this queued up. Okay, everybody, well, we got this done. The printer is all finished with our parts, so let's see if we can pull yeah, this so out. Let's, uh, let's open it up, take this out, pull the part off, and 
And there we go. Yeah, there it is. We've got all of our dimensions exactly like we programmed in for this. So yeah, thank you so much again for helping us out. All right, everybody, it's time to get this part back to the studio and installed on the base. So I'll catch up with you in just a minute. Hey everybody, we're back in the studio. It's the next day, and as I was setting up to film this last part, I realized that when we were in the lab yesterday, I didn't actually get a chance to get a really nice close-up shot of the mod that we printed. So, I'll put up some pictures now, and you can see from these that everything we talked about, all the designs and the dimensions that we had come up with, that printer absolutely recreated for us. So, when I got it back here to the studio, I pulled out my trusty glue dots and I just took a couple of these and stuck them right to the back um, of that little piece and that's all it took. Once I had those glue dots on there, I just pulled up the base and stuck it right on and the finished product is right here. You can see, um, and I know it might be pretty far away so I'll put up some more close-ups here too but you can see that by installing and just putting glue dots on the back of that piece I have now attached it to the base it fits right against this pickup and that triangular shape has provided me with this flat surface that I wanted all along so now the playing experience down here feels just like uh, one of my other bases just a normal base with a flat pickup but the playing experience up here feels like all of the benefits of um, having this multi-scale fan fret kind of thing. So now, you know, the playing, I don't have to think about what I'm playing, or I don't have to think about my hand falling off. So if... And I can play my riffs, I can play lines uh, without any kind of discomfort down here. Now if you think this is cool and if you have ideas for other mods you'd like to see us try on basses or guitars, let us know down in the comments. And if you want to find out any more about Dr. Rothman or the program that he runs or Stevenson University in general, I'll put all the links to the websites and information down in the description box. And as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.